So today I would like to introduce to you Google Gemini Live. All right. So when you go from the corner, okay, let's just open this up. I go from the corner up and then you will see this thing. And then right here, there's like this Gemini Live. You can see that, right? And then right here, same thing on the phone, on this other phone, you just pull from the corner up and then you can see Gemini Live right there. All right. So very, very simple to generate this Gemini Live. Now you can enter it, interact with this Gemini with any question you want, and then they will answer you. And now all the language that they can provide is very limited. So let's just say if I want to say in Cantonese, they cannot do Cantonese. They only can do Mandarin. So there's the language they are still developing. But right now I can, I'm going to use English to communicate with Gemini Live. And using Gemini Live, you don't have to keep pressing the button. They can just keep on going and going without any questions. So when you do that, can you tell me what is the uh, weather today? In Richmond, it'll be sunny with a high of 17 and a low of 7. Right now it's 16 and sunny. Do you think that it will rain on Tuesday? Yes, there's a chance of showers on Tuesday. Should I bring an umbrella then? So what is the best umbrella I can buy in Vancouver? If you're looking for something to last, Davik makes bomb-proof umbrellas. They're a bit pricey, but you won't have to replace it again. Or if you want something more budget-friendly, Fulton makes decent ones. You might find them at a local department store. Do you want something small and compact or a full-size umbrella? I want to know the price first. Safe umbrellas start at a little over a hundred bucks and can go up from there, depending on what style you want. Fulton brand umbrellas, on the other hand, are more like 20 or 30 bucks. So do you think like umbrella is better or driving a car is better? Well, an umbrella is great for protecting yourself from the rain, but it can be a pain to carry around. Driving is more convenient, but it's not always the best option. If it's just a light shower, an umbrella could be fine. But if it's really coming down, driving might be your best bet. You could always check a weather app to see how strong the rain is supposed to be. So do you think like rain is better for driving or umbrella for raining? It's always better to use an umbrella when it's raining. Umbrellas are designed to protect you from the rain. While driving in heavy rain can be dangerous. Rain can make it harder to see and can also cause hydroplaning. So if you can, it's definitely better to take an umbrella. So let's just say I want to buy a car around 20,000 to 38,000. Which car do you recommend? That price range opens up a lot of options. Do you have any specific features in mind, like all wheel drive or extra passenger space? Or are you leaning towards something sporty or more fuel efficient? Actually, I would like to buy a Subaru. Okay, Subaru is known for being reliable and good in winter weather. At that price point, you could probably get a nice Forester or Crosstrek. Both are SUVs, but the Crosstrek is a bit smaller and better on gas. Do you care about fuel economy, or is space more important? Uh, space more important, and the price too. If space and price are your top priorities, then yeah, the Forester sounds like a good fit. It's got plenty of room for passengers and cargo. You might be able to find a good deal on a slightly used Forester too. That could save you a few bucks. Do you want me to find some Foresters for sale in your area? Uh, just give me a rough number. How much do I have to pay? New Foresters start around 30000 to 35000 bucks. But if you're okay with getting a used one, you can probably find something nice for a few thousand less. Hmm, okay. What about camera? I want to buy a camera, um, Sony, around $3,000. Which one do you recommend? A full frame camera. Sony makes a bunch of great full-frame cameras, so let's narrow it down. Do you want something compact and lightweight, or do you want a more pro-level camera with all the bells and whistles? Maybe a pro camera. Sony makes a couple of different pro cameras. Are you thinking about the pro mirrorless ones, or do you want something else? Maybe something like A7 III Sony. 
Are you talking about the Sony Alpha 7 RV? That's a fantastic camera, but it's actually a little bit over your budget. It's a great option if you can stretch your budget a bit, though. It takes absolutely stunning photos and videos. If you want to stay closer to your $3,000 budget, there's always the Sony Alpha 7 IV. It's not quite as high-end, but it's still a great camera that takes amazing images. Is that the full frame, Dan? Yes, both the Sony Alpha 7 IV and Alpha 7 RV are full-frame cameras. The main difference is the resolution. The Alpha 7 IV has a 33 megapixel sensor, while the Alpha 7 RV has a whopping 61 megapixels. The higher resolution on the Alpha 7 RV gives you massive image files with incredible detail, but it also makes the files bigger and harder to process. Do you need that much resolution, or would a 33 megapixel sensor be plenty for what you want to shoot? Which one do you prefer? Canon, uh, Nikon, or Sony? It's tough to say which brand is definitively better, since they all have their pros and cons. Sony's got amazing autofocus, Canon's known for its video capabilities, and Nikon has a solid reputation for overall image quality. The best way to decide is to try them out if you can, see how they feel in your hands, and if the menus make sense to you. You should also look at the lenses available for each brand, since that's a big part of the system. So do you prefer full-frame camera or a cell phone to take pictures? A full-frame camera gives you a lot more control over your shots and produces higher quality images, especially in low light. But cell phone cameras are super convenient and the quality keeps getting better. Do you want to take photos as a hobby or just for fun? Um, I actually comparing iPhone to Samsung and for maybe like taking pictures and video as well too. It's really close. Both Samsung and Apple have amazing cameras. Samsung phones typically have more versatility with their cameras, like better zoom capabilities. But Apple's cameras tend to be more consistent, especially in low light. Do you care more about having lots of different features to play with or getting a great photo in most situations? More features better than low lights. Okay, in that case, Samsung might be a good choice. Their phones usually come packed with extra camera features like different lenses, better zoom capabilities, and fun editing tools. Would you like me to find some reviews that compare the latest Samsung and Apple phone cameras? Uh, it's okay. I'm considering maybe the Fold 6 uh, Samsung camera. The Samsung Galaxy S23 has a great camera with lots of features. You'll have fun playing with the different lenses and shooting modes. Plus, Samsung usually has good zoom capabilities, so if you like capturing things far away, you'll probably be happy with it. Do you want to hear about some other phones with awesome camera features? For sure. Okay, how about the Google Pixel 7 Pro? It's known for having a really versatile camera setup with great zoom capabilities and awesome low light performance. Plus, Google does a fantastic job with their photo processing, so your pictures should come out looking vibrant. Or, if you're looking for something a bit more affordable, maybe consider the OnePlus 10T. It has a triple camera system with a great main sensor and good ultra-wide lens. You'll have to sacrifice a little bit on telephoto Hold zoom, on. but it still takes really nice pictures. Hold on a sec. What about the Pixel 9 Pro? The Pixel 9 Pro is definitely a good choice. It has a lot in common with the Pixel 7 Pro, but it adds a few nice upgrades. The cameras are better, especially for zoom, and the display is even more vibrant. If you want the absolute best camera experience on a Pixel phone, the 9 Pro might be worth the extra cash. You could also check out the new Pixel 8 Pro. So what's the difference between 8 Pro and the 9 Pro? The Pixel 7 Pro and 9 Pro are both excellent phones with great cameras, but there are a few key differences. First off, the Pixel 9 Pro has a better main camera. It captures more detail, especially in low light. Second, the Pixel 9 Pro has a more powerful telephoto lens, so you'll get better zoomed in shots. And finally, the Pixel 9 Pro has a more advanced processor, which means smoother performance and better battery life. So if you want the absolute best camera experience and don't mind spending a bit more, the Pixel 9 Pro might be the way to go. But if you're happy with very good camera quality and want to save some money, the Pixel 7 Pro is still a fantastic option. So as you can see, everything that I ask, you can see this, everything is dropped down right here. So you can copy and paste, you can press like, you can do anything you want, and then you can even Google it by pressing that, and then they will actually tell you, you know, the answer and th everything. So everything that you ask, they will drop everything down. You can see that, okay? And it's very, very simple, easy. You can actually export to the document at, 
uh, documents, Gmails, whatever you want. All right. I hope this video helps you. This is a Gemini Live. When you just strike from the left side, and then you press that, and then it will show the this icon right there. All right. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. Bye bye. Peace out.